Hello folks, I'm back. Uh, remember I said in Sunday's video that I'd be doing a dual video presentation and here it is, sure enough. Uh, Great Battles of the American Revolution, uh, a little bit about me, I'm a huge Vietnam World War II buff, but on the side I also study the American Revolution, not a big Civil War guy. Uh, but, you know, I've seen the standard Civil War documentaries, etc. But the American Revolution I love. I find it fascinating. Uh, so, Battle Battles of Rhode Island and Newport actually comes out as Rhode Island. And, uh, interesting series. Uh, you have some tactics cards here. Joel Toppin has done a solo use of these cards you can download it um ew, consim world but i got a copy of it if you guys want it. anyway it's a solo way to show you how to use these um great feature and there's also these opportunity cards in this game which i love uh just you know cards that you can play just crazy stuff right it's not a card game but these can influence what happens right uh so this is what we're looking at here Right, and then it says, you know, bonus game Newport. Uh, the odd thing about this whole series is that it has very low counter density. So this is just Rhode Island, okay? Newport comes out with a bigger sheet, and then plus you got all your status counters and everything, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. So uh, regarding, oh, the other thing is, I'm using the flat paper map for this because it sits better under the plexiglass. The game does come with the full mounted map and it's two-sided for each one. So you get the same thing on paper, but uh, I think, wait a minute, let me double check here. Um, okay, yeah, you do. Uh, the mounted one, I just, it plexiglass works better. Um, and I, and we're looking at a complexity of six. What makes these games... Six is a territory that you have to be careful. That's kind of where I start going, hey, I'm going to have to really prep for this. You know, it's not like an eight or nine, but um, six is up, you know, six has got some stuff. It's got some stuff. And the thing that makes them so a little bit complicated is you have the standard rules are simple, right? You have your standard... And I really don't like... All right, let me just... I'm going to get this off my chest. I'm not a big fan of games that have a basic rule book and then a whole set of rules for just the one that you just bought. And yes, I know that almost every game I like does that, but it's kind of irritating. So it was kind of refreshing to like when you buy Revolution games, like uh, the Narva game or something. It's all just in one book. Or like, uh, I think Long Street Attacks. And those, I don't know if those have, I don't think they have separate books. I can't remember. But yeah, it's just, it's like, cause you, you know, you finish one and then, then you get this and this, of course, they're always bigger than the rule book and you got to sit there and remember like, oh, there's a blue counter that can do this. And, and this is where it gets, this is what's put me off. You know, when I came back, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do anything difficult. And then here I am. So, um, the thing about these is there's a lot of special units and commanders, um, including naval stuff. So, um, you know, I've always said one of my favorite American revolutionary games is Liberty or Death, the coin game. Uh, it's a bit odd, but um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this, uh, there's not many counters on the board, but there's a whole lot of like weird, like bog transit procedure. You know, there's bogs and there's uh, there's some things. So just be warned that you will, Good Lord. Yeah, British mortar. Um, just be, you know, engineers. You will be digging into a specific rule book. Uh, so that's a general overview. I did an unboxing of this already. But anyway, I just wanted to explain why I'm going with the paper. But the book I recommend for the Revolutionary War. I'm not sure if it's on Audible. I've been doing a lot of Audible lately. Yeah, the book I recommend is... Now, a lot of you are going to be like, Glorious Calls. Glorious Cause, 1776. No. I like Almost a Miracle by Jeff Fairling, I think his name is. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. 
I like that book the best. Okay? There's a lot of them out there. I would recommend, you know, 1776, but I like Almost a Miracle because, uh, you know, it's, it, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It, it gets to the characteristics of the people and the battle. So uh, check that book out. Um, my favorite Revolutionary War book. There are a ton. I will link it in this video as soon as I remember. Hopefully I remember to do that. Uh, okay, so this series, we're going to have to cover the basic rules. It's going to take a bit because there's some, there's some things going on here. Uh, there's some things. You got tactics, uh, how, you know, momentum. There's various combat results. There's some weird shit there, some pinning. Uh, you know, rifle fire is different than close combat. Not every unit has rifles. Uh, and then, of course, there's the tactics cards, and the tactics cards are um, used in combat, but depending on where your leader's located, you can't play every one of them. Uh, there's some cards that you can play every time. I think they did a good job of showing that on the back here. Um, like anything with the tan, um, you can play all the time. Skirmish, Attack, Echelon, Stand Fast, Withdraw, or Echelon. I, Echelon. Um, and then some of these you need a leader in the green and basically you'll both pick a card and that will determine your die roll modifiers depending on what the attacker or defender pick. And there is a completely solitaire version of this which is why I stuck with this series. I'm a big solitaire guy. I don't go on my rant. You know my rant. The solitaire suitability thing on the back of the box. Not a big fan because it's not, it doesn't always work. So, but this game it works at least for this and... There's some randomness, and, you know, you have uh, a morale track, the game. You know, combat back then was, can we shatter their morale? You know, make them flee. So, um, the maps are fairly simple. I love that. You know, there's not, it's not too convoluted with crazy contour lines going on in your face. Uh, it's easy stuff to look at, and... There's a ton of them. There's uh shoot, which one is this one again? This is this is nine. Uh, and White Plains is on the P500. I immediately backed that because it's one of the biggest battles of the Revolutionary War. It's craziness. Um, so we're gonna get into this. Uh, bear with me. Um, I don't have everything memorized. So what I need to do, we're gonna have to go over the basic rules, and then when we look at a specific game, just kind of what makes it different. Um, but we'll definitely do the basic rules with example units. Um, and then we'll go from there. And I'll show you how these work. And I'll print out. I'll get the solitaire stuff ready. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So it's kind of a little intro here. We did the unboxing. And then I'll tell you about my... I told you about my books. And the fact that there's mounted and paper map that comes in this. Again, very well-produced series. The Tri-Pack has some of the best battles of the Revolutionary War. It's a great deal, a great bargain. You get three awesome games in one box, but I wanted to start small. Uh, and there's some other ones like Pensacola and things like that that are real small, kind of weird. Mm -mm, you know, I didn't really dig the Florida stuff, but uh, so we'll try this and we'll kind of fire it up and go from here. Um, I'll put this up and then we're going to do kind of like what I did for SCS. It's kind of a new system. I don't want to put jam too much into one video, but um, I did want to get this out there. Uh, so just like a quick overview in the sequence of play, right? Uh, there are some things that allow you're going to be doing simultaneously. Um, there's an initiative. There's an initiative. To, to, oh, my God. Initiative determination and you can get these uh, momentum chits by winning combat and you can take those chits and spend it to influence your initiative role to try to go first. Um, and then you'll flip that marker over to see, say who's got it right. Move, rally, defensive artillery fire. Um, and then the rifle phase, not all units have rifles. So rifles were like a big deal, right? You know, they, they had longer range and you didn't have to get close like with a musket. So um, as they as they say, uh, rifles permitted units to fire over greater distances than units solely armed with muskets. 
So there's a rifle fire phase where you just hear pow, 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 and you'll just see the smoke come up and it looks awesome right down the line. Fire your rifles, and you know, if your opponent has rifles, you know, they, it's simultaneous, they'll fire here also, and everything happens at the same time, so it's kind of neat. Close combat is like musket, you know, bayonet stuff. Um, you'll check for a victory and determine a winner. Right, and uh, each each game has its own victory conditions. Um, some of the things in here, uh, zones of control, are not automatic around a unit. Like they don't extend into some areas. Okay, stacking uh, six strength points and one artillery unit. So your standard counters are. Um, Let's see if we can get that here. Hold on one sec. Strength, movement. Um, I'm in widescreen right now. I'm going to go back soon um, to the normal view, but I had to get the high tripod for this one. So, yeah, there's, there's stacking rules. And this game's very strict about stacking. Like, you can't even move through a hex that's overstacked. You can't even, like... You know, sometimes they're like, oh, at the end of your movement, it's cool. You just don't worry. You know, make sure you're not going low. You can't even move through an overstack tax. Um, there's also, like, penalties if you do it and don't pay attention. Uh, things like that. Your opponent can be like, boom, negative one morale, something like that. Uh, there's leaders. Good for um, close combat modifiers and rallying, Right. So you want to keep them near and they can help you rally or give you bonuses in close combat uh, and also let you play certain tactic cards. Um, when you fire and do close combat, there's a ton of uh, results you can get. Uh, you know, morale, army morale loss, retreat disruption, step loss. You can capture... People, they can get pinned, a leader can die, um, and you can gain momentum, which is like, you know, that thing I was saying, you could spend that. Um, so there's, you know, there's some subtleties in here uh, that make it interesting. And that's really about it for the basic rules. And then you start piling on with, you know, the game series rules. Uh, but we'll go over all that stuff. Uh, so this, this is definitely going to be a longer series than... The SCS one, just because there's a lot of stuff to cover. Pre-combat withdrawal is available to defender in close combat under the following circumstances. If all the defending units are parade order. Parade order means that you're perfectly fine and good to go in, in combat. Uh, because you can be shattered and disrupted. disrupted. Um, and none of the attacking units are dragoons. The defender has the option to announce a cavalry withdrawal after the attacker has declared his lead unit. Um, and then there's some other things where you can actually get out of it, especially Indians, uh, pinned defending dragoons or Indians may choose withdrawal if they break the pin at the cost of minus one army morale. I'll show you what all that means. And then here's your momentum things here. Um, you can spend them to reroll close combat. You can spend them to add to your initiative roll and you may spend three before the initiative die rolls to dictate player order for the current game turn. So you can just... Spend three and be like, you know what? You go first because maybe you want to see what he does and you can react to it. Um, all right. So that's a slight overview. It can get deep uh, once you once you hit this stuff. It's mainly just remembering what the leaders and the special units do. It's not like it tacks on, you know, starvation rules or anything. It's just those special units that get you. So... Um, all right, I'm going to put this video up. This is just a little overview. I've rambled on way too long and we're going to be doing, we're going to be hitting this and doing more World War II later, but I'm going to be doubling up on some videos. So, uh, let me know what you think, if you've played this, if you like it or not, but there are a ton of games in this series. All right. I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching.